Good morning. This is Chris Hill. And I want to wish all the mothers a very happy Mother's Day. It's indeed a day that we celebrate the gift of mothers. Uh, I'm so thankful today for my mother. My mother is 77 years old and uh, is still living. Uh, my grandmothers have gone on to be with the Lord. And I love them dearly. And, and I was in their lives right up to the time they went to their reward. And so we have such a high regard and just such a great love for mothers today. And last night, if you can tell, uh, last night I wasn't, I had no intention of doing something on Mother's Day. Usually I like to defer to others on that day. But uh, the Lord sent me a message at midnight. I, re I received a message at midnight and uh, I couldn't shake it. It was far too late. I almost jumped online and just delivered it then, but my staff is mostly mothers or mothers to be. So I, I didn't want to disturb their, their family normalcy, or I didn't want to get in the way of that in any way. So, so I waited to the morning and then uh, this morning, I just couldn't shake it. So I, I wanted to share what the Lord said. I know there's so many people and so many doing so many different things today. And so what we'll do is we'll just pin it and leave it there so that it can be seen and shared around the world. But if you do me a favor, I want you to do me two favors. You can just drop out and for a moment and just share this link. I'm not going to be on very long, but I have a message from mothers, something I'd asked the Lord years and years and years and years and years ago. And yet he answered it for me uh, <laughs> at midnight last night. Uh, so this is a Mother's Day message that came at midnight. Um, midnight, just as the hour turned here in mountain time in Denver, just as the hour turned to midnight, the Lord began to speak to me uh, from the question that I'd asked him some years ago, is Rebecca wrong? is Rebecca wrong? I can't always explain to you how God speaks to me. Uh, I wish I had a better control of it. The heavens are opened and he just constantly res resounds in my spirit. And uh, I, we barely can keep up with it. We barely can keep up with it. And sometimes I have to delay something so that I won't, I won't be in a position to, um, I won't be in a position to have to upset my staff and wake everybody up, you know. Uh, so it is It is a real challenge. It's a real challenge, but we're gonna go forward today. I want you to get a Bible and go with me to Genesis. Go with me to Genesis chapter number 20. Genesis chapter number 20 in your Bible. In Genesis chapter number 20 in your Bible. I, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do 25. Let me do 25, Genesis 25. In your Bible, I'm going to look at verse number 20. I love for you to share this. I love you to share this with somebody else, if particularly if it's a blessing in your life. I want you to share it uh, because we're going to get right into this word in just a moment. Genesis 25 and 20. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Genesis 25 and 20. It says, when Isaac, I'm reading from the new, I'm reading from the NET today. It says, when Isaac was 40 years old, he married Rebecca, the daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean from Hapadam Aram, the sister of Laban, the Aramean. And Isaac, verse 21 is very key. And Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, because she was childless. The Lord answered this prayer and his wife, Rebecca, became pregnant, but the children struggled inside of her. And she asked this question, if it is going to be like this, I'm not sure I even want to be pregnant. She says, if it, she says, she says, if it's going to be like this, I'm not sure I even want to be pregnant. So she asked the Lord and the Lord said to her, she asked the Lord and the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples will be separated from within you. One people will be stronger than the other and the, and the older will serve 
the younger. Verse 24, when the time came, I'm in Genesis 25 and 24, when the time came for Rebecca to give birth, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out reddish all over like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. I'm going to back this up a little bit because I really just wanted to get to this. I'm not sure. This is this is something um, in verse number 22, but the children struggled. There you are, struggled inside of her. And she said, if it's going to be like this, I'm not sure I want to be pregnant. So she asked the Lord, she inquired of the Lord. She asked the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two people will be separated from within you. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. This is this is the word of the Lord. I, I want to deal with the subject very quickly this morning. I know it's Mother's Day, and I usually defer, but I got a word from the Lord for, I needed to share with you. It, it's it's called "Is Rebecca Wrong?" Is Rebecca wrong? Father, would you open our eyes that we would see wondrous truth from your law? Unlock us, unleash us, so that we can decode the depth of your riches. In Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, particularly this is for my sisters today. I, I Some years ago, I began to ask the Lord a question uh, about Rebecca because I feel I, I looked at the life of Rebecca and moreover, I'd heard how Rebecca had been preached and and she had been preached so harshly that that I, I really wanted to delve deep within uh, to understand who she is. I don't like to just preach, you know, about uh, people the way the other people preach about them. I don't allow the opinions of other people to influence my study. I really try to stare deeply within the word of truth so that I can extract from it an impression of people for who they are and for what God is doing in their life. Very often preachers are overly influenced by commentators. They're overly influenced by uh, things that they learned in school or learned in Bible school or learned in seminary or learned even at the feet of their own teachers. Sometimes you just have to back away from the text and so you can even be influenced by your own notes. Sometimes it's very imperative that we don't allow even our own notes to stop us from being able to fully understand the Word of God. The Word of God changes. It doesn't change, but you change, but it will change to you. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Is how I perceived the scriptures when I began reading at age five and studying the scriptures is quite different from how I perceive the scriptures now that I'm a grown man. As a grown man, I see the Word differently. It is not that the Word has changed. It is that it has changed to me. And so even my own notes can overly influence me. So sometimes I stop, I get a brand fresh new Bible and I'll start making notes on the passage again. I'll throw away those notes. I keep the notes forever because they're, they're, they're a heritage for my sons and my, my biological sons and my spiritual sons and daughters that one day they may want to go through dad's old notebook and, and see what the Lord has said to him. But in the meantime, I'll cast those notes aside and I'll start again. I asked the Lord a question some years ago, and, and I don't preach anything until I have revelation on it. I don't preach anything. I think this is one of the failings of preaching is that we repeat a repetitive sermon because we don't have new fresh insight on it. So I wait till the Lord speaks and gives me insight on things. And, and so this time he, he spoke to me and it, it was a message at midnight. Now I, I was, I was, this is, you got to understand is, is I'm a fight fan and there's been no fights. <laughs> I'm a an MMA fan, fan, UFC fan. So I'm over a buddy's house. Hey, yes, right. I was over a buddy's house and we're watching, we're watching the fight. And in the middle of the fight, I start to get a download from the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. And it was, it's so crazy because it was a message for mothers. Now, I want us to look at the life of Rebecca because I'd asked the Lord a question some years ago. I asked the Lord the question, is Rebecca wrong? Is Rebecca 
wrong. Here's the thing is, is I'd heard this preached my whole life because people really get on Rebecca because Rebecca is, is going to help Jacob to fool her husband. Is going, she's going to help Jacob to fool her husband. There's, there's no way about it that you can't get around it. Is that she, she is going to overhear, uh, she's going to overhear old, old, old Isaac is, is old. His eyes are dim. And so he's going to call to Esau, who is his oldest son and his favorite and say to Esau, Esau, go out into the field and get me some venison, get me some venison, kill a deer, get me a venison and make that stew I like so much. Make that pottage stew uh, I like so much. And and before I die, I'm going to bless you and give you the blessing. Now, you'd already sold his birthright to his brother for some stew, so it, it only stands to reason to balance that infraction that he make a stew so that he can get the blessing. Now, Rebecca, uh, her name means ensnarer. Her name means ensnarer. Now, this is not in negative sense. It's in the sense that she was so beautiful that they named her ensnarer, that if you saw her, it was like she grabbed you. Her beauty was so overwhelming that it grabbed you. This is why uh, this is why Isaac was scared when he was amongst King Abimelech that he would lose her because she was she was she was an ensnarer. She was a, a snatchingly capturing beauty. Um, and she's in the situation where now she's older. Her master is older. Isaac is older. His eyes are dim. His eyes are dim and death is approaching. And, and so he, he says to his older son, Esau, you already lost the birthright, but let me make sure I get you the blessing before I get out of here. So he says, go to the forest and hunt down a deer, make that special stew you make for me that I like so much. And when you get back, I'm going to give you the blessing that goes to the older brother. Now, Rebecca, the ensnarer, is going to overhear. She's going to she's going to overhear the conversation. And so she goes to Jacob. Jacob is always close by. Jacob is not a man of the field. Jacob is not a man of the field. He's a man of the tent. He's close to his mother. He's close around the house. Uh, indeed, uh, Esau is a man of the field. Esau is comfortable. He's a mighty hunter before the Lord. He's 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 comfortable in the field. He's rough and tumble. He's strong. He's that's Esau. He's red and reddish and ruddy and hairy and everything you could imagine. He's 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 very masculine, very strong out in the field. That's Esau. Okay. Now here's the, here's the situation: is Rebecca overhears the conversation and says to Jacob, "Look, just go kill a lamb." Because I can make the lamb taste like the venison. I can make the lamb taste like the deer. I, I taught Esau how to make that recipe. I know I can replicate it with another kind of meat. And we can get it done faster while he's hunting. And then we're going to put the wool from the lamb on your arms. I need you to put the bass in your voice. Put some bass in your voice when you go in there. And you're going to go in there. Convince your, you <laughs> convince your blind father that you are your brother so that you can get the blessing. Now, this is the thing, and this is why people have maligned her. This is why people have destroyed her name and her reputation. She's mentioned one time in the New Testament. <laughs> she shows up again in the book of Romans. I mean, come on. I mean, Rebecca has a hard time to go. She has a hard time to go because she's misunderstood. And so I, I, I asked the Lord some years ago, I said, Father, is Rebecca wrong? Is Rebecca wrong? And the heavens were silent for some years. And so I almost forgot the question until last night. Uh, last night, somewhere around midnight, the Holy Spirit began to deal with me in a strange place, surrounded by, surrounded by my dear friends and watching the fight. 
uh, the Spirit of God began to deal with me and answer a question from years gone by. I said, is Rebecca wrong? And then he began to flash her life before me. He began to flash the fullness of her life before me. He began to show me that, that Rebecca, mm, that Re Rebecca, uh, it took her 19 years to conceive. It took her 19 years to become a mother. This is shorter than the period of time that it took Sarah, but 19 years is still 19 years. He began to show me that Rebecca, uh, we, we, we consider that she didn't get pregnant with the, the boys, the twins, uh, for 19 years. She didn't get pregnant with the boys for 19 years. But I'm not, I must submit to you, uh, particularly to the mothers today, is that it wasn't that she didn't get pregnant, it's that she did not bring forth child. So there is a very big difference. So if you can imagine, uh, 20 years, 19 years, almost 20 years of waiting, it wasn't that she she didn't conceive, is that the babies didn't hold on. It wasn't that she she that she didn't even, we're not even told if perhaps she got pregnant and produced child and, and there could have been a series of miscarriages. There could have been a series of problems and, and you can imagine waiting, waiting, waiting month after month and year after year in the hopes of bringing forth life. Isaac is not going to take another maid. He went through that with his father. It took his father and mother 25 years to conceive him. And by the time he arrived upon the scene, uh, yes, while he, before he arrived upon the scene, I, Ishmael had been born. And so he was, Isaac was born into the tension of those of those bad decisions from his father. So of course he is waiting patiently unto the Lord for God to open up the womb of his wife. He's not going to take a maid. He's not going to take anybody else. He's he's waiting patiently. And so the question comes monthly. You, can I talk to the mothers? The question comes monthly. Uh, is it, is it, is it, and, and, and the indication of her body is that no life is taken hold within her womb. And, and if it did, can you imagine how many, over the course of 19 years, this young woman, how many times, uh, perhaps she experienced miscarriage and how many times she experienced miscarriage and loss. And this was not a small thing. This was not a small endeavor. This was not a small thing. This is this is a decade. This is multiple decades of the attempt to bring forth seed. This is already a curse in the life of Isaac. He saw it with his he saw it with his mother. So he's going to be extremely sensitive to her. He's going to be extremely sensitive to the situation. He doesn't want to do the mistake that his father. Father makes and like Abraham took Hagar and, and sent everything into a, a tailspin of confusion within the context of the family. The child Ishmael has to be sent away and, and Ishmael is wild before the Lord, <laughs> the, the Bible says. And so Isaac doesn't want to do this. Isaac is not that kind of a person. He, he, he is, he's not really that kind. He's not cunning like that. And he's married Rebecca love at first sight. They have this wonderful relationship that is not scarred, nor is it marred uh, with, with the kind of turmoil that we'll see in the life of Jacob. And yet, and still, they have this one issue, is they are waiting 19 years for a child, 19 years for a son. And I don't want you to think that it was just complete. She was barren. We don't, the context of barren within the Bible can mean a whole host of things. It was, she may, perhaps she, she's having, she's having a monthly cycle in there. There is the indicator that there is no life there month after month, but perhaps there were some of those months where it did take, but it didn't produce all the way to life. Imagine 19 years of misery carriages, 19 years, month after month of disappointment and hurt. And then finally, the Bible says that, that Isaac goes to the Lord. 
Isaac goes to the Lord for her. This is very important. This is very important to note because it, it is, Isaac has to entreat the Lord for her. He goes to the Lord and he says to the Lord, Lord, please, can you give my wife a child? Can you give my wife a child? I want you to notice here is that not only does God give her a child, God gives her twins. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. See, when sometimes when you have to wait a long time for the breakthrough, I want to encourage you today that when you have to wait a long time for the breakthrough, don't get discouraged in waiting because when the breakthrough breaks through, it's usually more than you thought, more than you prayed for, more than you asked for, more than you believed for because when God breaks through, he breaks through. Somebody just say breakthrough, speak breakthrough into the atmosphere. That breakthrough brought double. When Isaac prayed, you know that she was praying. You know that she was inquiring of the Lord, but Bible says that Isaac entreated the Lord. Isaac inquired of the Lord. Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife and said, Lord, give my wife a child. Give my wife a child. And when God heard his entreaty and when God moved on her behalf, he brought a breakthrough that brought double. Glory, hallelujah. Double for your trouble. Come on, Charmaine. Come on here. Uh, double for your trouble. For 19 years of struggle. See, Sarah, this is not, don't just act like it always happens that way. It doesn't happen that way because, because Sarah waited for 25 years and received single. She received one. But here it is, is when the two of them, good God that you are, you know that, that Rebecca was praying, but now here is Isaac and Isaac is praying too. And so they're both seeking the Lord. They're both crying out to Lord and one can chase a thousand, but, but two can put 10,000 to flight. And here it is double. Some must say, some will just speak double in the atmosphere. Somebody write double on the screen for me. Somebody don't just stare at me. Somebody just say, hey man, do, do something here because I feel something beginning to move inside of my sanctified soul today because double for all of her pain, for all of her waiting, for all of her toil, before all of the pain that she incurred month after month and year after year and over and over and over and over and over again, Finally, the breakthrough comes. Finally, the release comes. Finally, the miracle comes. And the miracle is double. That's right. That's right. Somebody's helping me now. Someone going to help me now. There you go. Thank you, Sherry. Double, 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 double. Speak it in the atmosphere. That's right. Thank you, Irene. Double. That's right, Edith. Double. Someone just wrote double, 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 double. Receive, 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 receive. Receive double, double, double all those years of pain and all those years of crying and all those years of waiting and all those years of pain. When the breakthrough comes, the breakthrough is not just a drip and not just a drab and not just enough to get you by. No, it's not even the it's not even the one child. All she's asking for is one child. All she's asking for is for the 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 body to work that that she's given and and the seed to take that she's been given and that she be able to hold in her hands what she's been praying and crying out for for 19 years and she receives here it is double double are you are you ready for double are you ready for double are you ready for god to bring, God, I feel his anointing, to have to bring the type of double into your life. Are you really ready for double? Because I'm believing you're coming into a season where all you've been praying for and all you've been waiting for and all that's been held up is being released in your life. And though it has taken years and, and though it may have taken double, yeah, it mo though it may have taken double the time and you felt like this should have been done a long time ago, sometimes God is, is waiting for the 
is waiting for somebody else to finally come into agreement with you. And, and when Isaac entreated the Lord, when Isaac asked the Lord, then God released not just one son, but two sons. He, they received double. Can I push you here? Can we go a little bit deeper? Okay. Okay. So the first thing, one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. That was released in their life. Then the double comes. Now, here's what happens with the two times. This is what happens with the double. This is what happens with the double. And it is significant to note, and I need you to see this, is, is that with the double, good God that you are, I feel is anointing. Good God that you are. Here is, is, is in when the double happens, she, she has a pregnancy like none other. She has a pregnancy like none other because literally there is a war going on on the inside of her. I feel the fire of the Holy Spirit on me. Hallelujah to God. I'm speaking. Can I just go back and tell you double? Double for your trouble. Double for what you went through. Double for what occurred. Double where the breakthrough is coming and the breakthrough is bringing double. The breakthrough is bringing double. The breakthrough is bringing double. I speak it over your business. I speak it over your house. I speak it over your finance. I speak it over your body. I speak it over your creativity. I speak it over your writing ability. I speak it over your painting ability. I speak it over your ability to communicate doubled. Speak it over your ministry. I speak it over your church. I speak it over your situation. Double. When the breakthrough comes, it's not just going to be what you'll ask for. It's going to be double in Jesus name. That What does that mean, Chris? That means you need to start asking for something. You need to start asking for something right now. You need to begin to speak it in the midst of your situation. You need to speak it in the midst of your life. You need to speak it in the midst of what you're going through right now. Double, double, double the contracts and double the contacts and double the, the growth in your portfolio. Double, double your finances. Double, double your peace, double your joy, double it, glory to God, the happiness in your relationships, double the peace in your home. In the name of Jesus, I speak double, double more than you can handle. Press down, good God that you are. You're going to come get me. I feel like preaching early in the morning. Double, 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 double in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, here we go. Can I take you deeper? Can I do, can I go deeper? Okay, good. There it is. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Is, is now, is now she's in this situation where she has, she's now finally pregnant. Yes. Yes. She's pregnant. But she, this is a pregnancy like we have never seen before. This is a pregnancy as which has not occurred before. She, there is warfare happening inside of her. It is as if the children already know they're, they're, they're almost, it's like the twins are sentient. They are already thinking. They're already wrestling to get out first. It's as if they already know that they already know that the first one out, <laughs> hallelujah to God, the first one out of here is going to be the one that is going to have the birthright and the blessing. Now, I know you don't, you don't, you know, you're getting modern science on me here, but remember John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. I want you to understand that, that there are some things, and if you talk to enough mothers, they'll tell you that they knew stuff about their baby in the womb. Y'all not going to talk to me at all. You're going to leave me out here all by myself. You talk to some mothers and they said, no, he was a kicker in the womb. And I knew, <laughs> I knew that he was going to kick up some trouble when he came out here. I knew this child is there was a knowing. There is a knowing. There is a communication that defies the placenta. There is a communication that goes stronger. It goes stronger. There's something about that womb, in womb experience that the mother and the child, I believe, can somehow, can they can have information going back and forth because somehow these kids, these kids, they're, they're, they're wrestling. 
she is dead rest. Now remember, she's never been pregnant. She's never been successfully pregnant to the point where there are their arms and legs and they're wrestling on the inside. And the pregnancy is so tumultuous that of course she's going to shed. Yes, communication in the placenta is communication. Something happening. That that umbilicus, the umbilical cord is something different. Yeah, you can pick up the character. Thank you, Edith. Thank you for helping me. I'm a man here preaching on Mother's Day because the Lord gave me a message at midnight. I had no intention to be on here on no Mother's Day. Do you hear what I'm saying? But when the Lord speaks, I have to move. I have to move. And he said, is, Ver is Rebecca wrong? And I waited for the answer. I'm going to tell you, here it is. Is, is she, she has this warfare on the inside. Now, note, she's waited 19 years to experience this and 19 years to experience this. And it's so bad, according to the NET, that she says, is if this is pregnancy, I don't know if I want it. She's been doing nothing but praying for pregnancy for 19 years. She's got the women. She, you know, she went to the midwives within the villages and the midwives who were around and said, is this, is, 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 is this, is this supposed to be happening like this? Is there supposed to be this kind of kicking? Am I supposed to be this sick all the time? Is this and so finally, even after that, then she, she just says, I'm going to inquire of the Lord. Now, this is where the turn of the text. Oh God, I wish you would share, share, share this with somebody because I know in my Noah that I have a word from the Lord for somebody today. Here, here it is. Is, is she goes, she, she inquires of the Lord. Now, this is the turn of the text is how is this our this Armenian the and the the brother the, the her brother is Laban okay how is this Armenian this Syrian uh, going to inquire of the Lord how is she her brother is Laban she is not from a holy house do you hear what I'm saying she's from a bloodline that is different from the bloodline that is being cursed because the bloodline of Canaan is cursed. Canaan is cursed. And so they don't really want that to happen. They don't want their sons to be married to a cursed bloodline. And so I'm sure they're, they're very happy that they've gone back into their family pool. They've gone back in the family pool and they've gotten, they've gotten the daughter of Bethuel for their, their son. And this is fantastic. But now she's praying, Lord, if she's saying, if this is pregnancy, I don't know. So she has to inquire she inquires of the Lord. And so I began to dig within the context of the sages. I began to go through the Tanakh and I began to go through the, 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 what did the, the Jewish, what did the Jewish sages say? And, and they made some very interesting suggestions of how she inquired of the Lord. And as I began to dig through it, it got to, to the book of Yasher. And you, when you begin to look through and, and they make an interesting suggestion. Can I share it with you? Okay, I will. Uh, <laughs> is, is they ask the interesting question. They, they, they state that they believe that she goes to Shem. Okay? Do the math and what you'll discover is that the Shem, yes, Noah's three sons. I taught you about that, okay? That the, the, the Shem, Ham, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, okay? Okay, the three sons, that Shem is, is a powerful man of God. He is the he he is the recipient of the mantle that was upon his father Noah, and he has a deep and abiding relationship with God, and he lives a very long time. Can I take you a little bit deep? This is a little deep. I'll bring you up in a minute. I promise. But I, you know, I gotta be Doctor Hill. I gotta be me, and and I'm gonna study. Okay, I'm gonna study and seek revelation. This I can't do anything else. Is is that Shem is alive during this? time. 
I want you to understand that they lived a long time, that they lived a long time, that Shem is 102 when he has his first child and he lives some 500 more years. And if you do the timeline of how the lives overlap, there's times that Abraham is still alive here. There's some that even believe that King Melchizedek, y'all not ready for me, that King Melchizedek, y'all been playing with the in, in the shallow pool. Can I take a little bit deeper here, okay, that King Melchizedek, who is the king of Jerusalem, there is some that believe that Melchizedek is actually Shem. From, yeah, yeah, Shem, Chris, Shem from the ark? Yes, Shem from the ark. He's still alive. I know we lost people. I go deep and I lose the shallow. I go deep and I lose the shallow, but I'm here to talk to the deep. You can play in the in the shallow pool. Go to the kiddie pool if you want to, but can I take you deep here? She goes to Shem. If she, Can you imagine her going to Shem? Who else is going to understand multiple births? Y'all not hearing me? Who else is going to understand multiple birth? What do you mean multiple births? No, multiple birth. Multiple birth. Because I believe that Ham, Shem, and Japheth are triplets. Because within the context of the canon, they're married at the, 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 the their, their birth at the same time. And they're always put together. Yeah, I know. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so she goes to the only person who has any idea about multiple births, and he is a powerful man of God. He walks with God. If this is Shem, and if Shem is Mel is Melchizedek, now there's one of the other one has suggested that perhaps she went to Abraham. I'll take any of them. <laughs> okay, she inquires of the Lord, but we know that she is not of the depth nor the level to seek God on her own. There is no Levitical priest. There is no Ermin and Thurman. If you don't know what Ermin or Thurman is, keep watching this broadcast. Let me get something in your head that will get in your spirit that will grow you up for God's sake. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Here's the thing here is that she inquires of the Lord. There is no Levitical priesthood. There is no breastplate. There is no that she what she has to go to somebody who knows God. She has to go to somebody who knows God. She inquires of the Lord. She goes to a mighty man of God. She either goes to Abraham. Some would suggest that she goes to Melchizedek. And then they said to turn around and said, boom, bam, Melchizedek is Shem. My brain blew off my top. And then I began to realize that I just had the revelation and the insight that the three sons of Abraham of, of Noah were are listed at the same time. Now the last order is is Ham is the youngest. I get it, but we understand that in a multiple birth, the last the last one out is the youngest. <laughs> the God, y'all not ready for me today. I'm I'm on. I tell you, I feel the fire of God all through here. I want you to understand. She inquired of the Lord. And, and, and the man of God, the, the, in, the, the man of God, I believe it was Shem. I firmly believe this. He says, there's two nations. Looking beyond, there's two nations inside of you. And they're already at war. They're go, there are two different manners of people that are inside of you. Two different manners of people. There's, there's ethnic. He says, he's saying, this birth is not just like every other birth. He's saying that, that you're birthing something that is going to leave footprints upon the sands of time. You're birthing something that is going to leave footprints upon the sands of time and will be an impact in the ages of men. And here we are 45 Hundred years later, 4,500 years later, we're still talking about Rebecca and we're still talking about these two sons. Understand that this is a significant prophecy. This is a significant. 
insight. He is saying to her, I, I want you to understand this and get this. Two nations are fighting on the inside and two manners of people will be separated from your womb. You ain't heard this priest before? I'm in Genesis chapter 25, y'all. It's been here all along that two nations are warring on the inside of you and what you're not going to just birth. This is not going to be some nondescript birth that no one ever talks about or thinks about or, or considers ever again. No, this is going to be a significant birth. If I went through the Tanakh and begin to share with you who Esau fathers and sets in place and, and, and who he comes out of his womb and who comes out of him. These are significant men of God. This She is made significant by her progeny. I want you to understand because you don't, you'll misread Rebecca if you don't put her in context. You'll see her wrong. She, is, she has this prophecy dropped on her by a significant man of God, perhaps one of the men who was on the ark and survived, says to her, do you, girl, do you know what you're carrying? Girl, do you know that the, the, the genetics of this family will be carried through this seed and it will birth two manners of people and the world and history will record their lives and because of their lives, your name will be preached in pulpits around the world, 45 Hundred years later, y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm not hearing what I'm saying. She, he puts it on her. He puts something on her. And he said, he says to her, this, they're going to be great. He says to her, they're going to be great. He says to her, they're going to be great. Can I talk to the mothers again? Okay. You still there, moms? Did you leave? You need to share this with the mother. You need to share this with the mother. You need to share this with the mother. It's because this is this is this right here. This right here is where it got it. It I I I almost lost it here. Is she receives a prophecy for her children? She receives a prophecy for her boys. She receives a prophecy about her boys, and then they're born. Okay. They're, they're going to be great. The third movement is, is of the prophecy important is that the, 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 the older will serve the younger. The older will serve the younger. This is dropped on her in the midst of a tumultuous uh, pregnancy. This is dropped on her in the midst of a turbulent pregnancy that she is carrying history, that she is carrying history inside of her. She's carrying history inside of her. She gets a prophecy not about herself. She gets a word for her sons. She gets a word for her children. She gets a word for her children. And then they come into the world. You know the story. Y'all not going to talk to me at all. You know the story. As her sons are not, mm, her sons are, are very different. Mother, have you ever had different children? Same daddy, same, same daddy, same mother, but they're different. They both have destiny. They both have calling. But one is rough. Esau was rough. He was rough from birth. His skin was rough. He was born covered with hair. He was made for the outdoors. He, he has this strong nature. He's strong. He's a mighty hunter before the Lord. He's comfortable laying in the, in the fields and sleeping on rocks. And he's comfortable in the dew. Woke, wakes up covered with the dew of the field. He's comfortable. And then she has Jacob. He's second born. He, he's, so, he's so weak. And <laughs> the only thing strong about him is his grip. His grip is ridiculous. He has strong hands and he grabs hold <laughs> of his brother and slides out. They've been wrestling for months. They've been wrestling for at least the last, yeah, the last trimester. She has this rough 
neck. That's right. That's right, Mr. Robinson. That's right. He has this rough neck, rough neck, son. And then she has this smooth neck, son. Literally smooth. Jacob, he comes holding the heel. He's holding the heel of, of his brother. And, and she's got, and th their natures are like that. Jacob is always around the tent. Jacob is not going out there at night. Jacob is not a hunter. Jacob is on, around her skirts. He's constantly around the skirts. He's around. He's listening. He's learning. He's extremely cunning. He's extremely cunning. He has great insight. He knows what he wants. He will go after it, but he's a supplanter. He is a supplanter. He's a trickster. You got to watch Jacob. And then you have Esau. Esau's a simple kind of guy. He's a simple kind of guy. He he will hunt it down. He will stab it and kill it and drag it home. Okay. That's Esau. They're not. Oh man. So he, Jacob is, you know, uh, you're praying for Jacob. <laughs> you're praying for Jacob, but then you're praying for Esau because Esau it be, is going to marry two Hittite women. He, he marries not one, <laughs> but he marries Two Hittite women, not one, but two, not one, but two. He has two Hittite women. He's not going back to the, to the people. He's taken right from the Canaanite region. He's taken right from the, and he's not one time, but two times. He, he's wild. He, he's out of control. And you have a promise oh, about both of them. Y'all not hearing me. I want to talk to the mothers this you can have a promise from the Lord from you, for your child. And God said that they were going to do something. God said they're going to be saved and serve them. God spoke to you in the secret of your prayer. And you see them living in a way that you didn't anticipate in a way that you never expected, in a way you never asked, in a way you never, uh-huh, y'all better talk to me. Oh, I feel his anointing. You, you see them. Can, now, now you understand, Rebecca. Now, instead of throwing stones at her, let's begin to cry for her because she has to watch her children go, all go awry with gifts and talents and callings. And she has a promise from the Lord from a a source that a source that is unimpeachable. If this is Abraham, my God, if this is Shem, if this is Melchizedek, she knows that 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 they're supposed to be something great. And Esau went off and married two Hittites and, and Jacob, Jacob don't look like he going to do nothing. How is he going to lead anything? How is he going to be in charge of anything? He's, he's shysty. He's, he's shysty. He's a backdoor dealer. He's a skater. He's going to skate on, grab the heel of somebody's efforts and slide out. What is, she's looking at her children for whom she has travailed for 19 years and gone through probably one of the worst pregnancies in the early history of the Bible. She has a promise and a word for them and they're living so far from the word that it makes the prophecy seem improbable and impossible. Have you been here? See, see, put your rock down. Put your rock down. Every preacher ever threw a rock at her. Ah, uh, don't get me started. Pray for revelation. Pray for insight. Good God, before you open your mouth to speak, feel somebody, feel that mother looking at her children, wondering, where is the word that I got? Where is what he promised me? Where is what I saw? I know I heard from God. I know I heard from the voice of God. And yet these children are not living nothing near what I saw. They're not living nothing. I want to talk to every mother who's waiting for them to come back. 
I want to talk to every mother who has a word and a promise. I want to talk to every person that has a promise from God. And it seems like you are so far from the promise that, that it doesn't see. See, if you don't look at it through these eyes, you'll throw a rock at Rebecca. But Rebecca is not wrong. She knows that she knows that she knows that she knows that Jacob is supposed to be something. And Jacob is supposed to be great and, and Jacob is supposed to do something great with his life and yet look at Jacob I gotta help him make stew to get this blessing have, have you ever have you ever have you ever said Lord you promised me that this child was gonna be would walk before you. They're, they're out in the street and they're so far from what, this is so far from what I saw. This is so far from what I was promised. This is so far from what I was told. She hears, she hears, Jacob having a conversation with Esau and he's about to give him the blessing. And so she intervenes because she just feels like if she doesn't help Jacob, it's not really even preference. I really believe she loves both. But what do you do when you have a prophecy that you know is true and yet the people aren't lining up <laughs> to what you know God told you. Can I take it? Can I take it deeper? When you, it's your child. Nobody knows the child like the mother. You, you talked, yeah. nobody knows the child like the mother. Nobody. The father has birthed the child through, through in, in a moment of passion, but the mother has to produce the child over a series of months and then nurse the child. Human children are dependent upon the mother longer than almost any other mammal. There's few other mammals in, in the world that in, in within the natural order that are dependent upon the parent as long as humans. There are some, but I'm telling you, it's elongated period. It's an elongated period. There's a bond that ensued. She knows these boys. She sees them their potential. She sees which way they're going. And, and, and how is Jacob with his weakened self and his, his, how is Jacob going to rule over Esau? Esau is a monster. Esau is a beast. Not the beast. He's, you understand, I'm putting in, okay. He's strong. <laughs> he's, he's powerful. She says, if I don't intervene, the prophecy won't come true. If I don't intervene, if I don't jump in there, Jacob can't see this. Jacob doesn't conceive this. Jacob is oblivious to all this that is going on. And so she's like, I got to get in here and do something. And see, and you'll throw a rock at her. You'll call her wrong. You'll call her evil. You'll call her, uh-huh, all kinds of things. Unless you put yourself in her sandals and realize that she's, what do you do when you're confronted by a word that seems impossible? What do you do when you have a promise for the Lord for your child that seems improbable, impossible? Then, if only then, if you haven't experienced this, hush. If you, if you haven't, um, it doesn't even have to be a child, just a promise, just because God will drop a promise, a word on you that seems impossible, improbable. And it, it will... It can almost, it can almost say, Lord, I got, I got, Lord, I got to help this one. <laughs> I got to help this one along. I don't know how, 
I don't know how this will happen. I, I don't know. See, hey, see the Rebecca and Sarah are in similar positions. Y'all not talking to me at all. Rebecca and Sarah are in similar situations. Sarah calls Hagar. Rebecca makes stew. Because both of them are in improbable and impossible situations as women, as women. They know the answer before their husbands know the question. As women, they move spring into action. She starts making the suit. She starts getting the arms ready. And, and is Rebecca wrong? I, I just can't throw a rock at her, y'all. Is Rebecca wrong? I just can't judge her hearts to y'all. I is Rebecca wrong, Chris? I, I just can't, I can't malign her name. I can't drag her through the streets. I will not, I will not tear her down in my pulpit. I will not use the digital platform or the once we get out of this <laughs> glory and hallelujah. I will defend her for the rest of my ministry because I know what I know it is to feel like when you have a promise from God and it seems improbable and it seems impossible and mother's intuition and love jumped in and said, I gotta help Jacob. He, he's not strong enough to best Esau. Esau will be fine. Esau can exist in any situation. Esau can make it work. Esau is powerful, but Jacob, if I don't help Jacob, I've been helping Jacob since he got here. He was not the first out. I got to, she, he kicks in and she says, I got to help him and, and I got to pray for him and, and I got to support him and, and I got to, you see, we, we have more empathy for the weaker we do. The weaker, you know, that child that you, <laughs> that child, sometimes the older child, sometimes the stronger child, sometimes the stronger child is, 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 gets the, gets the short stiff, short end of the stick. I know it's true. I know it's true. Sometimes parents, you, you love both kids the same, but that weaker child, you know, you know that, that older child, you know the older, the, you know, but the baby, the baby, if we don't have the baby, the baby is still a baby. He's a grown man, but he's a baby. Jacob has to leave and go to Laban for 14 years just to get mature. By the time he gets back, Esau is so blessed he's rich already. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. She knew. She didn't need no word. She didn't need a word. She's a mother. She's a mother. She saw the character of her kids. She saw the character of who they are. Good God, I'm talking to somebody today. See, because when you birth something, when you birth a vision, when you birth a dream, when you birth a ministry, don't nobody know it like you know it. Don't nobody see it like you see it. Don't nobody know what it will do the way you know what it will do. You, 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 ah, that baby, I'll get that blessing 100%. Yeah, 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 I'm the baby too. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. It doesn't seem like it. I had to grow up so fast and been have had responsibility for so long for so many people. But I want you to get this. Was Rebecca wrong? I don't believe she was. I refuse to destroy her. I refuse to tear her down. I refuse to talk about her. I refuse, I refuse to not look through the lens of of her own eyes and have mercy because what do you do when the promises of God come to you and they do not line up with your situation? It's possible to have a Rebecca moment. It's possible to have, it's possible to have It's possible to have a Sarah moment. I'm not going to judge you for a Sarah moment. I'm not going to judge you for panic. I'm not going to I'm not going to judge you for fear. I'm not going to judge her. I can't judge her. Is Rebecca wrong? I must defend her and say no. 
because the plan of God was wrought. The plan of God was brought to pass through her actions. Glory, hallelujah, the knowing of the mother. So I want to pray today for every mother. I know, here, see, <laughs> I want to pray today for every mother. Can I make it wider? Is it okay? Uh, for every, I want to pray today for every for every person that has a promise from God that has not yet come to pass, I'm praying for two things. That the vision will come to pass quickly and be double. Amen. And, and secondly, I'm praying that God would give you the patience, the persistence, the drive to stand upon the promise of God. I'm praying for the strength to endure. I'm praying for the strength to hold on. I'm praying for the strength to stand in faith in the midst of the situation. And my brother, my sister, you may have moments of wavering, but as long as you stand on the word of God, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. If this word was a blessing to you today, I want you to take a moment just to sow something. We're building this digital platform right here in the Maha City of Denver, Colorado. God has commanded us to begin to teach and preach from this perch, from this lofty place. And, and so in the midst of a shutdown, we started buying studio equipment, green screens and lights and putting things in. If this has been a blessing to you, I want you to follow the instructions that are on your screen. I think they, they pinned it there. They pinned it there and you can just drop right down and you can give through, you can give through Cash App, you can give through PayPal. Glory, hallelujah. You can give a number of ways that they they have that you can give and sow into the ministry. If you want notifications about when we're going live, and you never know when I'm going live, unless you know <laughs> it's you just text the word share to 1-833-762-7425. And we'll send you a text message, usually about 30 minutes before I go live. Uh, unless I'm going to do it at midnight, I'm not going to bother you at midnight. I got a message from at midnight. The Lord spoke to me at midnight last night and he answered the question, is Rebecca wrong? He said, walk through the world looking through her eyes and you will see that she was not wrong. You're holding on believing for your child. You're holding on believing for your destiny. You're holding on believing for your miracle. You're not wrong either. You're not wrong either. You're not wrong either in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. God bless you. This is Dr. Chris Hill. I'll see you soon.